supplies supply is some place that is a supply of food or drink it supplies food or drink and it is a treasury and what i want to really say about this is because we know that in the bible there is a lot of type and shadows there is um i guess a lot of um for another term, analogies, so things that are likened to parables and different things. So when we're looking at this, what do we consider to be a storehouse, that place that supplies us? And we're going to talk about this from a spiritual context because we know that even in that sense, food, um, if you look at it from a spiritual sense, what we're being fed, what our soul is being fed, um, what our spirit is being fed, we're talking about spiritual food, spiritual drink, and then it's also a treasury. In the Old Testament, the tithe went directly to the ministers. That was how God supported the ministers who were doing who were uh, who was doing his work. Most pastors teach that the storehouse is your local church and that and that parachurch and other social welfare ministries are meant to be supported by offerings above the tithe. In a perfect world, we We would want to agree with that statement, but we already know that this is not a perfect world that we're living in. Technically, a storehouse is where you put your food. It's a it's a storehouse. It's a resource. It's a place that you store up those things. And it is a place not only um, that you give into, but it is a place that you can go to and make a deposit. And then it's also a place that you can go to and you can withdraw from. So if you were in need of something, you would you could go to the storehouse because it's plenty. It's it is full and you can withdraw from it. But then it's also a place. So I want you to do see that a storehouse is twofold. It provides as a resource center where you can go and you can get what you need, but it also uh, is as a place that you can go and you can give into. Amen. You could say that the storehouse is where you get fed. So you should be giving your tithes where you get fed. And that may not be your local church. And I know some pastors are probably cringing right now (laughs) when I said that. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give some things because when I read that, I began to think about that. And it's like if you're going somewhere every week or every Sunday, um, why wouldn't you want to sow your tithe and your offering into that place? But we know. um, And so I'm going to break that down a little bit better for you because I began to ask the question. uh, The question becomes, what does being fed mean? I really had to think about that. And I said, you know, God, you have to give me um, a biblical meaning or definition of what that means to be fed, because I need to know what I should be looking for in my church. Um, and and I'm, I won't say that because I, we have a good church here at Rivers. And so um, I, I definitely understand that. But in the season and the hour that we're living in, I thought about this. We must be able to know if we are being fed and not only if we're being fed, but are we in a good church? Amen. And so as I began to seek the Lord concerning that, he took me to a passage of scripture in John 21 and 15. Let's go there. The book of John, chapter 21 and 15. And some of you are you already may know where I'm going with this, because as, as, as I began to pray it, Um, the Lord took me to this passage of scripture and and I know why John 21 and 15. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon, Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, feed my lambs. Verse 16, he saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And then basically he said, well, if you do, he said unto him, what? Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Um, Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. 
Jesus said unto him for the third time, then feed my sheep. And so when I looked at that, I, I think that I believe that the Lord brought me to this point in scripture because we know that Peter was the one that he told upon this rock, I will build my church. So as it relates to the church, the bride of Christ, and then he goes on now in this statement, he said, well, feed my sheep. And so it, in my mind, I thought, well, if I really want to know what God is saying, how to feed the sheep and what feeding um, those that come into our church, come into the into the house of the Lord. What does that look like to be fed? Because we really have to know these things. And so when I looked at that, that word feed, it is the Greek key uh, G1006. It is Bosco. And this is what it said. I love this. It said portraying the duty of a Christian teacher to promote in every way the spiritual welfare of the members of the church. Come on, glory be to God. Hallelujah. We're talking about what it means to be fed. We're talking about giving where you are fed. And so this is something that you should really look at and examine when you go to sow your seed into a church. And, 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 and let, me make, let me say this, exclusive from we know we go to conferences or we may go outside of our churches and different things like that. And we know that that is above our tithe and our offering. But we're talking about when we're going to say, this is my church. I am a member of this church and I am going to sow my tithe, give my tithe into this ministry. And yes, I do believe that we should expect to be fed. Glory be to God. We I expect to be fed. I don't want to go to a church and I'm not being fed. I don't want to go to a church and they're not concerned with my spiritual welfare as a member of the body of Christ. We're not talking about carnal things. We're talking about my spiritual life. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It also means to keep. Now, we already know that word to keep also translates to a word called what? Shamar. Come on, glory be to God. So not only are you should be concerned about my spiritual welfare, but now it is, it is your position as a church, as my uh, overseer, as my covering, come on, as my shepherd, come on. You are have the assignment to keep me, come on. And I know we don't put it all on our pastors because I, I get that. We get, Some people might be saying, well, no, nah, that ain't all on your pastor. I get it. But this is what that word feed said. And if we look at the pattern, what Jesus told Peter, he wouldn't have said it. Holla. <laughs> he wouldn't have said it if it wasn't a part of his responsibility. Amen. Okay, I'm going to calm down. Okay, it is likened to that of a shepherd tending to a sheep. Tending to his sheep. When I thought about this, I thought about the words that the scripture uses concerning what we eat. And then I thought about meat. I thought about bread. I thought about fruit. And I thought about water. These are all terms that the Bible is clear on. But when you're reading the Bible, it's not talking about what I'm putting in this belly right here that just going to blow me up and make me get all chunky. But it's talking about spiritual meat. It's talking about spiritual bread. It's talking about spiritual fruit. And it's talking about spiritual water. Come on, glory be to God. And so when I looked at that, and also, I don't want to leave this out because this is key too. And then it talked about milk. Come on. So these are all things that it talked about what we will be fed as those that are a part of a local body. Amen. The milk, it, it refers to the less difficult Christian truths. OK, and we get it because sometimes you do have to separate those that are still in the babe stage and then those that are a little bit more mature and what they can handle. And we see this demonstrated in uh, First Corinthians three and two. Uh, I'm going to read this really quick. First Corinthians chapter three, verses two. Let's start at verse one, because this is going on to tell you. He said, and our brethren could not speak to you as unto spiritual. We're not talking about natural welfare. Come on, we're not talking about the things in the natural. When I come to where I'm going to, I want to my spiritual life to be enhanced. Come on. 
we're talking about spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes. So we know that there are different categories and everybody is in their own uh, phases in their walk in, in their Christianity. But this is what he said. He said, I have fed you with milk, the less difficult spiritual Christian truths and not with meat. <laughs> and there it is. He said, I have fed that word fed feed again. Um, for here too, you were not able to bear it, neither yet are you now able to bear it. And then when I thought about that word meat, and I looked at that word meat, um, it talks about that which is given unto you, to you for your soul, and it serves to refresh, to strengthen, and to nourish it. So we're talking about what, um, what it looks like to be fed in the house that you are a part of. Amen. And then we also know that as Paul was relating it in this scripture, he's talking about your level of growth and maturity. Meat, it is symb symbolic of that which supplies you with that which facilitates in your growth and your maturity. So if you are in a church and you're being fed, we there should be some evidence that <laughs> there should be some evidence. Glory be to God of your growth and of your maturity. Amen. Amen. Okay. And then we're going to talk about bread. We know that bread is that which, and I've correlated to this because this was the example Jesus, um, the Holy Ghost gave to me. He said um, it was in the parable when he fed them with the fish and the loaves. And he said, you don't follow me because of the miracles I do. He said, you follow me because what I gave you, it filled you. <laughs> it filled you. It fed you. Hey, hallelujah. So we're looking at bread as that which is filling. And then we know the fruit. And we're going to talk about that. That's the place of Galatians um, 5 and 22, the uh, fruit of the spirit. It is that which develops your character. So I'm giving you these things on how you know whether or not you're being fed. It is that which develops your character. And it is also where it is that place where it is teaching you how to produce. Hallelujah. You should be producing fruit. If you are in a house and you're being fed, you should be looking for some fruit. I should not come and leave the same way. I should not be here over I don't know however long of a time and there's no real evidence or no fruit. Hallelujah. Coming forth from my life, I'm reminded of the scripture that says, because he that is planted in the house of the Lord, what he will flourish what he will produce hallelujah he will what bear fruit glory be to God and then I looked at that word water come on it talks about I thought about this the it's life-giving come on life-giving water is life-giving that means I can come here and when I start I may be uh it not physically but naturally not naturally but spiritually dead on the inside but when I come you are giving me water come on we are rivers of living waters come on the river is flowing out. it is giving you life hallelujah it's giving you the newness of life in Christ Jesus hallelujah and then I also thought about this and let me read this one to you I know I'm giving you a lot of scriptures on tonight, but it's okay. We, we talked about having a, 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 a sound biblical <laughs> perspective, right? Amen. So you're going to get that on tonight. We give scriptures so that you have it. And so you know this is not something that I'm just making up. This is the word of God. We're going to Ephesians 5 and 26. We're talking about the water. He said that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Come on. There is a cleansing aspect that come in. It, and that's why we tell people, a lot of times people say, I got to wait till I get myself together before I go. No, no, you don't. Come on in here, dirty, filthy. Come on. Come on in here, dirty, filthy. Whatever you've been doing, smelling like weed, alcohol, you might have popped up out the club. You might have popped up out of somebody's bed house. Whatever it was, come on in here and get cleansed in the name of Jesus by the word of God. We're talking about being fed, spiritually fed, because that is what where you want to sow at. Hallelujah. You want to sow to somebody that they're giving you meat. They're giving you bread. They're giving you fruit. They're giving you water. And then at the same time, if you're still not there yet, we got some milk for you too because we want you to grow. Glory be to God. You are not discredited. We don't count you out. Hallelujah. But we got something for everybody in the house of the Lord. 
Oh, glory be your name. You should recognize that a good church, but now here we go. You should recognize also, though, that a good church does more than just teach the word. Oh, come on. We walking up and in. We talking. This is what being fed should look like. And it's not just teaching the word, but it ministers also to the whole man and the family unit. You want to be at a church that, that is they're concerned about you. But they also concerned about your family. Why? Because that is the pattern of Christ Jesus. That's what the church is all about. It is about family. Glory be to God. It fosters, come on, a good church. Now we're talking about aside from being fed, the meat, the bread, the fruit, the water, and the milk. Now there's some other things that you should be looking for. It fosters community and is an important part, come on, of your spiritual growth. It also it, it is a place that you need the maturity that comes through fellowshipping with other believers. Come on. It is a place that there will be fellowship. You know, I used to, I, you know, I've been to churches where you go to a church and it's like nobody ever approach you. You never meet anybody in the church. They don't check on you. They don't call you outside of Sunday and your Tuesday or whatever days we go to church. Ain't no real fellowship. But then we get to church and, oh, sister, such and such, I love you and da -da -da, all this stuff. But there's no real community and fellowship. This is all a part of a good church. Glory be to God. A good local church helps you raise your children and gives them a place to meet other Christian kids. Come on, we know us in, in, in our community. It'd be like, you don't tell me how to raise my kids. Look, I said that like, you. No, uh, uh, I got this. <laughs> but come on, how many know we all need help? And you can't be that person that feels like no one can help you or give you wisdom. It, it, it does. Literally, that said, it takes a village to raise kids, and especially now. I need help with my children. You know, we got to get that mindset. I need help with my children, and I'm not going to be too proud to act like I got this and I can do it all on my own. Now, I get it. it we're not talking about controlling you and trying to instill something in you because we're talking about the word of God. But if you have something someone that is teaching you biblically uh, how to raise your children, you want to receive that. You want to eat that. Amen. And you want to provide your children a place to meet other Christian kids. Come on, sometimes we have our children all up and stuff. We ain't got no business having our kids all up and stuff in. Come on, I used to be that one. You be dragging them kids everywhere. No, they ain't got no business being off over with you over such and such house. Come on, leave them kids at home and get some people that's going to help you with these babies. Amen. It offers one-on-one -on -one counseling and marriage counseling. Come on. You want to be at a church that's concerned about you individually, but about you and your covenant. Come on. Some, a church that is concerned about your covenant. Come on. Because we, once again, we're talking about the family unit, the whole man, the family of God. And it stems with the husband and the wife. My children ain't all right if me and my husband ain't all right. Come on. Glory be to God. So you want to be able to go to somebody in your ministry and they can give you sign. And you, and they, not only can they uh, tell you what a good look marriage is, but they is they are an example of what a good marriage look like. Come on, I've been in a place like that before too. Glory be to God. You telling me about my marriage, but then I'm looking at your marriage and it's all jacked up. These same principles you teaching me work the work, man. Come on, glory be to God. It meets the needs of individuals, not just general words that is released for the house, but individually. So we know that sometimes you can go to a church and, and we're releasing that general word, like this is a general word um, for the house. This is a general word for the body, but what about me individually? How can you help me in my finances individually? I'm gonna take it back there because we're talking about uh, how we're, financial stewardship. What, what, help me sit down with me. And I want to say this, we have pastors that will sit down with you and they will help you get your credit right. They will help you build your business plan. They will help you do all of these things financially. Amen. 
Your local pastor also helps you deal with grief and get through hard times. Come on. So if you are in a good local church that is preaching the word, uh, come on, this is another one, a good local church, helping widows and orphans and doing what, what a godly church is supposed to do, guess what? Then you should not be hesitating. <laughs> to kick out that cash right? you should not be hesitating to sow into that you want to sow into that that's 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 worthy come on that is a house deserving that is a ministry worthy to sow my 10 percent into and above into then you should be tithing at that church and there shouldn't be no questions about it amen there shouldn't be a question about it, but what we found is being fed. This is what I found, and I, I began to have this question with the Lord. I said, you know, because we can say that, but that ain't always the case because you can be in a church that's doing all of that, but somebody in that church going to swear. I promise you, somebody going to swear. I ain't being fed. Come on, raise your hand. <laughs> Raise your hand. I told you it was going to be a little bit rough, but it's sweet. Amen. There shouldn't be a question about it, but what I found is being fed is subjective, and there are a lot of factors that could hinder whether or not you feel. Come on. That's the key word. Whether you feel that you're being fed or you're not being fed. The word can be being sold. This is what I found. The word can be being sold, but the ground. Come on. The state of your heart. It is being sold on determines whether or not you are receiving and taking in all the nourishment, all the nutrients that is being poured out and that is being given unto you. Amen. Everything. And it also is the state of your heart that determines whether you're going to produce fruit from that which is being sown unto it. And so I began to ask the Lord about that. And I'm going to give you these real quick. Mark 4. Uh, chapter Mark chapter 4 verses 4 to 20 I'm not going to read all of these you can go back and read these scriptures for yourself but we're talking about the state of your heart because yeah we can talk about maybe the church ain't doing this or the church isn't doing that and all of these different things but sometimes that is a matter of perception that is a matter of and we know that perception starts where in your heart perception starts in your heart whether you believe you're being fed, whether you can perceive it, whether you can recognize it, you could be sitting in the midst of the church. Have you ever been somewhere and you think to your, and it's, it's almost like I've seen this before where the same people getting the same word Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, but then you look at sister so-and-so and you see the fruit, but then you look at sister so-and-so and ain't no fruit there. And you begin to wonder why the state of your heart, the soil, the ground of your heart, what that which is being given and poured out unto you, it determines whether or not uh, you you um, perceive whether or not you're being fed. And when you don't think that you're being fed, that is a reason why you won't sow and you won't give your tithe. There could be many other reasons, but I'm talking about sowing where, giving where you have been fed or where you are being fed. And so one of the reasons that we, we cannot sow into the ministry where we are is because uh, it is a perception problem. It is a heart problem, amen? The four grounds that that the word or it can be sown on. And we're talking I'm looking at this from the picture of the state of your heart. Your heart could be a wayside heart. You can be being fed, but Satan will come and convince you that you're not. Amen. So that means I could be coming to church. I can be getting everything I need. They offer counseling. They offer all of this. But I just don't never ask for it. Come on. And then Satan convinced me that. See, they ain't concerned about you. They're not concerned about your marriage. They're not concerned about your children, all of these different things. But that's a wayside heart. And then I looked at the stony heart. I correlate this to those that have root, that don't have root. And every time you get offended, it will cause you to go from ministry to ministry looking for something else. Come on. So now I'm not going to give my tithe and offer here. Practically, I done got offended. I don't even really want to be here. So now I'm going from church to church because I feel like I'm not being fed. I done got offended with the ministry. I done got offended with somebody in the ministry. We're talking about the state of your heart, why you feel as if you're not being fed. 
And then we're talking about thorns. You allow the cares of this world to keep you from sowing. So that means it's nothing personal. It's just what I got going on in my life. <laughs> it's just everything that I got going on in my life, the cares of this world. I just, I don't have it. Even though I'm receiving, I'm giving, I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting. I just don't have anything to give. Why? Be because the cares of this world, everything else has become more important or it has my focus, my attention. And so I got to pay this. I got to do that. I got to do this. And then I don't feel like I have anything to give into the ministry. And then number four, it is the good ground. What is being furnished or given to you by your ministry is received and it brings fruit in your life. And because of that, then you want to sow into the ministry. Come on, people of God. Oh, Jesus, when my heart is right, hallelujah, and I'm being fed, hallelujah, I appreciate all that has happened to me since I've been here. My life has been transformed. My life has been renewed, hallelujah, because of the word of God, hallelujah. I'm producing fruit. My marriage is better. My money is better. My children is better. I want to sow into that. Come on, I'm being fed. I want to give. Hallelujah. Amen. But unfortunately, huh, we don't, it's not always so, and I do kind of believe this, that most churches are teaching about the grace of God, and that most churches don't teach about the grace of God, and they aren't really preaching the true gospel. Mm. And that's something. And we're living in a time that we, and this is why I thought this was so important to really identify these things because this is what, where we are in, in, in the world. This is where we are. A lot of churches, they're, they're not teaching about the grace of God. They're not really preaching the true gospel, um, uh, uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Most, but most people are looking for a church that is teaching about the love of God and the finished work of Jesus. But many people are going to churches they know aren't good churches. Oh, come on. <laughs> there are some people you know you're going to a church that you know isn't good, but they go there out of a sense of obligation or because there are what they feel like there are no other options. Maybe their whole family goes there or it is the one they've always gone to and they don't want to change where they go. These are reasons why people just stay in churches. You in a church, but you know it's not a good church, but this is why you're there. And if, you're, if you are in that position, you're not really going to be sowing. You won't be faithful to giving. That, that's when, you know, when the offering plate come around or it's offering time, you get that little 20 here, that little $2 here, that little dollar over here. But if the spirit doesn't hit you today, I might got 50 for you, but I ain't going to give you no full tithe and no full offering. Come on, I'll tell the truth. I've been there. Look, come on. We, we talk about truth. This is what it is, for real. In fact, many people are going to churches that preach things completely contrary to the gospel message. And I'm so glad to be in a church that teaches sound doctrine. Come on. But at the same time, you got to do your due diligence as well. And that is according to 2 Timothy 2 and 15. You, this is why, especially now more than ever, we must study to show ourselves approved. Hallelujah. We got to have that Berean spirit. My husband talks about that all the time. That Berean spirit. Well, when, when you hear something, even like today, what you hear me saying come across this pulpit, I pray to God you writing them scriptures down. You're going back and you're looking. The symbolisms that I've given you, you going and you check out them Greek keys you you should want to know is what she's saying real is this true is this accurate symbolism that she's giving us concerning these things you can't just take my word for it you got to know these things for yourself and then what or you may be at a church where you leave feeling condemned and beat up the exact opposite of what a church supposed to do so basically what we're talking about now is a church that's not good i've given you the examples of what a good church is and what what it should be and what that looks like but these are some areas where maybe you're struggling to kind of know this and I, so i can't just give you the good without giving you the bad as well amen 
And so when I thought about this, it's the exact opposite of what church is supposed to be. And I thought about this. There has to be a balance between grace and truth. According to John 1 and 17, meaning that you can't have so much grace that you ignore sin. Come on. But not too much truth that it appears that all you, you do is to use the word to bring rebuke and co correction. Because when you do that, people do. They leave feeling beat up and condemned. They feel like we can never. There's somebody who always tell this testimony that it would bring her to tears and weeping. That she would go to church and she would see the other people because nobody was ever really transparent. And she would leave church feeling worse because she thought everybody was up here and she was down there. We don't want that either. You don't want to be in some place that, that is that as well. Because what we know is too, and this is why we talk to, and this is why this is so important about relationship and fellowship. Because rebuke without, um, giving somebody so much correction and rebuke without relationship, it breeds rebellion. And then people don't want to give. People don't, matter of fact, people don't want to come to the church. <laughs> look, look, just go on and put it out there. You, you know what I'm saying? So there has to be that balance between grace and truth. It would be wrong for me to tell you to put your ties into the local church and not qualify that by saying what a good local church is and, and, and then what a bad church is. And it, we so to sum everything that I said, a good local church, it is one that is meeting the needs of its members. And I've given you um, even those things, too. And so I, I pray that you would examine your own heart as well. Look at the soil, the ground of your heart, and figure out, am I really being fed? Or is there something working in me? Am I letting all these things um, keep me from seeing what is really happening and perceiving that I really am being fed, but because of what's happening in my heart? I don't see it, so then I'm not giving and I'm not sowing into the ministry. I have a few more minutes. Let's see where we can go with this. It matters. So we're going to go to uh, this. It matters where you plant your seed. So I done talked about us and some of the church. <laughs> some people think that God sees their heart when they give and they reap a benefit from their giving, regardless of what the church does with their money. But that's not true. That is so not true. You'd be a very poor farmer with that kind of attitude. You can't expect the same results from casting your seed on pavement that you would get from planting in a fertile soil. Come on. That means on a hard, <laughs> on a hard place. You can't expect to just go out there and throw some seeds out in that parking lot on the concrete. And then you go out there every day and you looking at a hot time some, where's my harvest? It's just not going to happen. Amen. So I thought about this. The same thing then applies to the ground, meaning the state of the ministry you're sowing on. Is it good ground? Mark chapter 4. Is there fruit being produced in the ministry? Why? Because the return on your giving is going to depend to a degree on how fruitful the ground is that you are sowing into. If you give to a church or a ministry that isn't really accomplishing the Lord's work, come on, people of God, accomplishing the Lord's work, then you are going to get marginal returns. And I think about that when he says some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. So, you, you know, it's, it's, so you might be thinking to yourself, why well, I'm only getting 30. <laughs> why well, I'm only getting 30, Jesus, help me. I need my whole full 100 fold. Amen. <laughs> If you give, when you plant your seed in a place that is fruitful and ministering the word of God, then you are going to receive a better return on what it is that you have sown. In addition, every time you give to a church or a minister, you are casting a vote in support of how they conduct themselves. <laughs> Ooh wee. Every time you give money to a church, you are helping support what they do whether it's good or bad. These are things we should be considering and thinking about. So it absolutely matters. So don't let people tell you that anymore, that it don't matter, or it don't matter what's happening. And, and one of the things that I love about our ministry is we have financial meetings, and there is a printout. You know, I've, I've been to churches where they don't want you to see what's going on with the finances. That stuff is closed. If you ain't on the uh, little board or the treasury, uh, you ain't got no access. 
you know, but we we are in a ministry that they are open. They're transparent. Amen. I love that. Every time you I'm not saying the church has to be perfect because we know that no church is. But maybe your church isn't hitting on all cylinders, but they are preaching the truth and being a light to the community. They are feeding you. They are helping you. And in that case, I would recommend giving your tithe there because you need what a local church offers. Come on, forsake not the assembly, the gathering together. We're living in a day where people will tell you, you don't need to go to church. Come on. Yes, you do. You need to be in, in a church. You need to be in fellowship. You need to be in assembly. Because we know one of the things with that is that's how the enemy gets you. When you isolated and you off to yourself and you ain't got no covering, you are open for attack. That's why the sheep will stay under the covering of the shepherd. Because as soon as they start straying off, them wolves will be right there ready to pluck them up out of the pasture. Come on now. Don't let people tell you that you don't need a church. In that case, I would, yes, recommend giving your tithe there because you need what a local church offers. It's wrong to put your money into something that you don't agree with and then go get fed by ministers that you don't financially support. That's like eating at McDonald's and going across the street to Wendy's to pay for your meal. <laughs> ah, glory! Come on, how many times do we do that? We sit in church Sunday after Sunday. We being fed when we need to bury our loved ones. Come on, we calling the pastor. We need somebody at the hospital. They come, they doing all of that. But then you see this old big name person over here or whoever it is, and then I'm sowing money over here and giving my money over there. But the main, oh, glory be to God. But the one that was there for you and your family, you're not, you don't want to sow into that. That's what that means. It's like eating at McDonald's, but then you going over to Wendy's to pay your bill. Come on, what does that look like? We, that should not be named among us, people of God. And if you aren't being fed at your local church, once again, then you shouldn't be tithing there. But if you are being fed there and they, have, they are supplying you with the things that you need, you should be sowing into that ministry. Giving where you are fed isn't the only guideline for tithing, but I believe it should be the primary one. Widows and orphans may not minister to you, but it is a godly thing to give and support them as well. That falls under what, what is called benevolence giving giving out of kindness and generosity why because God loves a cheerful giver and giving benevolence that means it is a desire to do good to and for others so we're not talking necessarily about your tithes we're talking about the above and the overage of it amen I got one more and then we're gonna get out of here there too there is also giving that goes toward missionary work there is also, so not all of your giving should go to where you are being fed. And we're not talking about tithes, we're talking about offering. But the bulk of it should. This is where offerings come into play and being led by the Spirit. So sometimes there is a place where the Spirit will lead you to give an offering into this. Or so into missions. Or so into the widows. Or so into the orphanages. Or so into something in your community that's going to better help your community. Come on, matter of fact, so into a family. So into somebody else that you see in need. Maybe their kids need shoes. Come on. That's, you so, you want to sow into that. You want to go above and beyond just giving into that because why? We sow out of the goodness and the kindness, especially when God has been good and kind to us. Glory be your name. So that is my time, people of God. I made it through part one. Hey, glory be to God. And I'm going to come back and hit you with part two next week. I hope it wasn't too rough for us tonight. Amen. Oh, man. Wow. Wow, man. You know, I, I was sitting back as I was just listening to the teaching and I just, my, my, you know, my heart was just burning. I thought about, <laughs> I thought about the, uh, I thought about the, uh, the brothers when they were walking with Jesus on the road to Emmaus and, and they was like, man, didn't our hearts burn as he opened up the scriptures and just, and I, man, as prophetess Ann was just ministering, I was just like, oh my goodness, you know, and I mean, there was so, I just, I think I ran the gamut of every emotion. There was some indignation that rose up and then there was some honor and then there was some joy and I, then I really got, then there was some appreciation because I, I, I got to thinking about our, this ministry, 
And I'm going to talk just briefly about this local ministry, Rivers of Living Water Ministries International Muskegon. You know, and even our network, you know, our our senior leader, uh, Apostle Stephen Garner and his lovely wife, Prophetess Yolanda Garner. I mean, just, you know, uh, along with Apostle Rod and Prophetess Selena Stevenson, they are just tremendous gifts to the body. And I but, you know, I, I want to just talk from a personal perspective because I remember the mess and the wreck that I was when I came to this ministry. And I, I, I just quickly, I just kind of just just kind of perused my past and, and things that that I've grown out of, grown over, grown, you know, um, overcome and where I've been equipped, where I've been challenged, where I've been corrected, where I've been encouraged, you know, where grace was given, but then also where even discipline and correction was given. And I thought, man, I'm the better for it. You know that. I've been fed. I've been fed well here. And I know many of you can attest to the fact that you have been fed well here. And so I want to encourage you. I, I know personally that there are a, a lot right here in this city, but even some that are outside of this local uh, vicinity that are fed oftentimes because there are many times <laughs> there are many times when, uh, you know, our leaders uh you know, for ha for needing to minister and meet the needs of so many others, you know, th they can't they can't ha they don't have the time really to spend with their own families. I've seen that example over and over again. What I'm really talking about is I'm talking about people that love God. And they love God to the extent that they will feed his sheep. And we have that here in Apostle Rod and Prophetess Selena Stevenson. And I'm grateful. I'm honored, you know, uh, you know, my marriage. Oh, I, I, saints, I, I don't have a whole lot of time, so I'm not going to go. My, I, I had so many arguments and so many complaints about my wife and my marriage. But you know what? I had to be fed. I had to be cultivated and I, I had to be much and I had to mature. And, you know, all of that happens. You don't you don't put everything on the local church, but so much of that happens when you're cultivated in a healthy healthy Bible teaching ministry. And I'm just proud to say, I'm just glad to say I belong to a church like that. And if you are part of Rivers of Living Water Ministries, Muskegon, you are part of a fellowship like that as well. And so I am here to encourage you and to ask you to examine yourselves, to examine yourselves. I was praying for some of you that those of you some of you who are uh, connected, you're in covenant relationship with this ministry, but you have not faithfully supported this ministry. I've been praying for you. And, you know, I pray that this word really ministered to you and that it reached your heart, you know, because my heart was pricked in, in, in areas. And I know I know what uh, uh, the atmosphere and the environment that is presented. Now, we can't force you to take it. We can't force you to learn and force you to grow, but we definitely will do everything within our ability to pre to present that environment and create that atmosphere for you to have everything that you need to grow in the knowledge of God. And and so I just want to say this because especially in this time uh where many are are struggling, you know, uh, because of the pandemic, but then there are many who you know, are, are increasing financially, but somehow your faith has withered. And I'll say it this way. Some of, of us, some of you need to examine whether you have enough faith to drive the cars you're driving, uh, to shop at the stores that you shop at. And what do you mean by that? Well, I know that there are there were those and there are some who after God blessed them with a new vehicle, um, then all of a sudden their 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 giving began to wane. And, and, and I'm trying to understand what really is is going on here. Um, you know, you I, I would ask you to examine whether you have the faith to drive that particular vehicle. Because if. Having the vehicle and paying for the vehicle 
now puts a challenge on your honor and esteem for God and his house and for the people that that labor in the gospel to support them faithfully, then, uh, sir, ma'am, I dare say you don't have the faith to drive that car. You don't have the faith to carry that purse. You don't have the faith <laughs> to wear those shoes. And uh, and I only feel I only feel the boldness to be able to say that because I'm coming behind a prophet as Ann wears. <laughs> so don't blame me. Blame her. <laughs> Amen. Saints. No, seriously. Come on now. We we have been invited so many times and in so many ways to do an honest and earnest examination of our hearts. And the appeal is, is here again tonight. You know that you've been fed by this ministry. Then sow a seed of support. Be faithful in the tithe to this house. Do you know that? I know I'm not saying something that doesn't make sense, but I wonder if, if people sometimes just don't realize your local church needs your financial support. The local church can't make it without your financial support. It deserves your financial support, especially and particularly when that local ministry works so feverishly to feed you. That's all I'm going to say about that. So what I would invite you to do is sow a seed of support, partner with this ministry, give your tithe, send an offering, and use our text to give platform. If you would just simply text the word give and a dollar amount to area code 231-221-2160, you can be assured that your giving would be received. It's you're giving into good ground. You're giving into a house that takes uh, stewardship and being responsible with God's resources. We take that seriously. As Prophetess Ann attested, we're transparent and open with what we do in all of our accounting. We have independent uh, auditors that audit our books. So we don't just manage our books in-house, but we also have those that independently audit our books. So, so saints, rest assured, when you give into this ministry, you're giving into good ground. So, again, 231 Two two one two one six zero. Text the word "give" and a dollar amount. You may also send your gift to fifteen fifty. That's one five five zero East Laketon Avenue, Muskegon, Michigan four nine four four two. That address again is fifteen fifty East Laketon Avenue, Muskegon, Michigan four nine four four two. If you want to just send a check or money order. Make it payable to R-O-L-W-M-I. Saints, we speak the blessing of the Lord over your life. We're grateful for you. We're glad that you are on this journey of learning with us. We want to invite you back uh, next time. We'll be here on Sunday at 11 a.m. Also, we'll be back again next Wednesday at 7 p.m. We want to, before we get out of the way, we want to uh, give Prophetess Ann time to come back before us, uh, just to pray for us, uh, maybe answer any questions that, that anyone may have, but then finally to pray a benediction over us. If you would, please receive again Prophetess Ann Ware. God bless you. Amen. It's, it's such a blessing um, to be, like Elder Camp said, just in a house um, that loves the people of God and and not just our members, but other uh, just people in general. As I was sitting there talking, I thought about our leaders and I said, man, they live a poured out life. And that's not just to our congregation, but they live a poured out life. And so that is truly a blessing. And, and so even in that, you know, when we talk about offering, you know, when you want it, when a spirit put upon you just to sow an extra something into them, don't forget about them as well to sow into our leaders, into our pastors, because they they honestly, they truly do live a poured out life. Um, sacrificing of themselves on behalf of the Lord and, and they don't ask for anything. It is just who they are and what they do. And so I am thankful and I am grateful for our, our leaders. I honor them. And so on tonight, if there's nothing else, if there's no prayer request or any questions or anything like that, um, we are going to close out on tonight. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your word. Hallelujah. We thank you for your word that is sure. Your word, it is true. Your word that cleanses us. Your word that corrects us. Your word that encourages us. And your word that builds us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And, and so we just thank you for the word that has gone forth on uh, th just throughout this season in general. It's been such powerful uh, prophetic insight in the word of the Lord that have come um, from each and every person that has ministered. And so we thank you that you have blessed us, Father, with such a, a those such of those that will minister the word of truth father in the name of jesus because we know that it is the truth that makes us free and so i thank you i pray this is my prayer for us your people that we come to a place of financial freedom <laughs> hey in the name of jesus that as we are learning and growing in this word of financial stewardship that the truth of this word would make us free that we are those that will walk in such a level of financial freedom come on just begin to decree that over yourself i am walking in a place of financial freedom that is the blessing of the lord on tonight and we give you all the glory and all the praise until we meet again in jesus name amen